Welcome to the Published Author Podcast, where we help entrepreneurs learn how to write a book and leverage it to grow their business and make an impact. I'm your host, Josh Steinle. Today is a little bit different than past episodes. I have two guests with me. I have Christine Carlson and Deborah Evans. Now, Christine Carlson, you may have heard of her. She's a New York Times bestselling author, renowned speaker. She's recognized worldwide for a little book that you may have heard of called Don't Sweat, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. She co-authored this with her late husband, Dr. Richard Carlson. And she wrote a memoir that's now become a lifetime movie starring Heather Locklear titled Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, the Christine Carlson story. So with over 30 million books in print, Christine has emerged as one of the leading mindfulness experts and a transformational guide who's been featured on national radio and TV, including the Today Show, The View, and Oprah. And also with us here today is Deborah Evans. Deborah is a developmental editor and ghostwriter. She's very involved in books. She's worked with a lot of celebrities, and she and Christine connected a few years ago to work on her memoir, From Heartbreak to Wholeness. And then they've gone on to launch a business together called Book Doulas, and they are helping people to launch books, to give birth to books. That sounds a little weird, but to birth books. Well, Christine and Deborah, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Josh. So wonderful to be with you again. Yeah, you. So glad, I'm so glad to have both of you here. And now, Christine, we'll start with you. Let's give some background to our listeners of who you are, where you came from, and uh, your story with your husband and such, and how that led to all these books and everything. Well, thanks, Josh. Yeah, so I, um, I was kind of one of those really uh, reticent writers. Um, Richard had written Don't Sweat the Small Stuff was his 10th book. And um, it became a national phenomenon, an international global phenomenon, actually, um, pretty much right out of the gate. And so he was one of the first early branded authors with the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. He was one of the first authors to brand a series like that. And so after about the um, third book, he invited me to write Don't Sweat the Small Stuff in Love with him. And I was really happy to do that because quite frankly, he was writing most of the book and I just was coming along for the ride. <laughs> so I was like, this will be fun, you know? And then um, I felt like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm all done. My author, you know, journey is finished. I go back to being mom and being the crystal in his clock and his muse. And he thought, no, he thought differently. He um, asked me at that point to write the first um, book for women in the series, uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff for Women. And I remember I had the same question on my mind that a lot of people and probably many of your listeners um, have on their mind. They had the, I, in fact, I didn't even have the desire to write solo. I really didn't. I always thought it was plenty just to have one author in the family. We didn't need to. And so, but I, I really asked the question, who am I to write a book? And Richard answered that fairly quickly. He said, you know, you're my wife, you're my life partner, and you are enough to write this book. You can write Don't Sweat the Small Stuff for Women because you live this philosophy. So I thought about it for 24 hours. He pretty much put it to me that if I said no, he would ask another woman to do it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> game on. <laughs> That's how I started my author career. And and then um, suddenly, uh, 10 years later, at the 10th anniversary, literally at the 10th anniversary of Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, um, Richard got on a flight um, to New York, and he was uh, promoting a different book that he had worked on uh, with a different publisher. And on the descent of that flight, he died suddenly from a pulmonary embolism in 2006. I, I can tell that story now without crying because it's been almost 15 years. And um, it's, it's been an incredible journey for me. Um, I didn't just stand right up and claim my life as an author. It took me a couple of years, but then somebody reminded me I had written a New York Times bestselling book. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I did that. And I wrote Don't Sweat the Small Stuff for Women. And I, had the, I was asked to write a book, Heartbroken Open, um, a journey of my loss, because people were just so profoundly touched about the awakening that I was going through during my loss and how I was handling it. So I, um, that, that, how, how did they know what you were going through? 
Well, I wrote on the website. So I immediately started writing on the website that we had. Um, I would write a blog, more of an update. And I would just share my journey. My kind of my thought was like, geez, I, this really is killing me um, that I'm going through this. Might as well wake a few other people up too. <laughs> So I was like, you know, I was happy to have an outlet to pour out my feelings about this journey. We had a lot of people logging on to our website and, and leaving just incredible messages to our family. So I wanted to address those people. And so I, I did that pretty early. That's how people knew. Isn't it interesting how turning our minds to others in a time of grief can lead to healing? Yeah, immediately. I mean, I think immediately I was fully aware of how difficult this process was. And I sometimes I'd be laying on the floor just in heartbroken tears. And I would think, how does the normal person get through this? Because I had such an amazing support system. I had so many tools in my emotional tool belt. I, you know, had never had any experience with grief, but I certainly knew that I was a highly intuitive person and I could figure, you know, I could allow this process to heal me. And I thought I need to really watch this because this is something that needs to be shared. And so you said that you were approached to write this memoir, to write the book. Who was it that approached you and said, you need to write this? It was Bob Miller. He was the president of Hyperion. um, When, before Hyperion was sold to Hachette Books, like our, all of our books were uh, published by a division of Disney. Then Hachette bought Hyperion Books and Bob Miller left to do an imprint with Harper Collins. It was called Harper Studio. And so he took a few authors along with him. And he asked me at that point if I would write a book. And so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll write a book, you know, sure. And, um, and that's how that unfolded. And, and I, you know, I had, I had already published An Hour to Live, An Hour to Love, The True Story of the Best Gift Ever Given. And that was a letter that Richard had written to me. And I published that as a national tribute to him. And that's when I was on Oprah um, to to really tribute him. And it was kind of ironic because I used to say, well, if Richard could choose where he would want his national tribute to be, it would be on Oprah. (laughs) And so we got, we were on Oprah for that uh, national tribute to him, which was just a really beautiful experience. And then I, I had written my journal and my, actually my journal became Um, the nemesis for heartbroken open. It was at the very core of that book. I just took the journal and, you know, wove in a bunch of different themes that I had learned the life lessons that I had learned, which kind of um, is, is really a new was kind of a new way to look at memoir in a way, because I was a self-help author writing a memoir. So I had really woven in my teachings, like, and my lessons into the memoir. And then I thought that would be incredibly helpful for anybody who was going through profound loss. You mentioned that Oprah was the place for the memorial for your husband. Would you mind retelling that story that you told me when we talked on the Hope Strategy podcast about the first time your husband got connected with Oprah? Yeah. I mean, it was really, it was so cute because he was in the green room and he, Oprah popped in to say hello. Oh, oh, oh no. Okay. Well, that was a different story. Okay. Now I know which one you're talking about. Yes. Yes. The phone call. Now I just want to say just a prerequisite is that when you watch the movie, this isn't how they portrayed it in the movie, (laughs) but that scene in the movie actually did happen a different time. Richard was on Oprah four times. So Anyways, this is how Richard first was on Oprah. It was incredible. Um, He was, we were having a discussion and he was about ready to quit writing because he had not um, gotten the kind of advance that he really needed after a full year of working on a book. This was prior to when you write a book proposal and sell the book proposal. Authors actually wrote a whole book and he wrote this whole book and he only made like $5,000 on it. And it pretty much meant that we were going to look like we were going to go into debt the next year because this is how he was supporting your family, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, among, he had a few different hats he was wearing, but this was one of the ways, you know, he had his buckets of income and he was as an entrepreneur, um, he was looking at this bucket as being much more substantial than $5,000 for that book. And so we were having this discussion and he said, God, I think I might need to get a job in human resources or something, you know, just because I, I'm not, this is not cutting it. 
And we live in California. I mean, we live in Bay Area, California. That is like one of the most expensive places in the entire world to live and always has been. So we, we had this discussion and I was like, you can't, you can't quit. This is your passion. I know you're going to hit it. It's going to happen. And he was really despondent and we had taken two different cars. So I um, rolled into our driveway first, walked in the door. I am not kidding you. When I walked in the door, the phone rang. I ran to it, I picked it up, and the woman on the other end was a producer from the Oprah Winfrey show. And she said to me, she said, oh my God, the strangest thing just happened 15 minutes ago. 15 minutes ago, we were talking about this. 15 minutes ago, I was bent down in my library and I was kneeling down, I was looking for a book on stress management and your husband's book popped off the top shelf and hit me in the back of the head. She said, I. I looked up, I looked at the book and I was like, no way, <laughs> this is the perfect book. So then she asked, could Richard be on a plane to Chicago the next day? And he was absolutely, I can be on a plane to Chicago the next day. And it, it was a totally turnaround. It was a pivot in his career at that point. Such an amazing story because if the book hadn't fallen off the shelf, she wouldn't have seen it. He wouldn't have gotten Oprah. He would have quit being an author and then the other 20 books or whatever he wrote after that <laughs> might never have happened. I mean, yeah, it's possible. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing when, you know, the divine energy of life intervenes and something like that happens. And it, it just really, it, you do know that most people quit, most people quit before they're right before they're about to make a real break in, in what something they've been working for. And usually it takes about 10 years um, Richard's agent always told him it would be his 10th book um, that really took off. And cer certainly it was his 10th book. That's good advice for some authors out there who might be on their fifth or sixth book and say, oh, this isn't working out. It's the 10th. <laughs> <laughs> I know most people think 10 books. Oh my God. How would you ever birth 10 books? And boy, you've, you've written a couple books yourself, haven't you, Josh? Yeah. And it's a lot of work to write a book, even in this day and age with Amazon and self-publishing and everything. It's a lot of work to write a book. It is. Well, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work to push a baby out. That's why Deborah and I call it birthing your book. <laughs> so, so maybe we can fast forward to Deborah. let you tell the story of how did you and Christine first meet? So Chris and I uh, both attended a workshop here in the Bay area um, both friends of ours were leading this workshop. It was a week long commitment and neither of us really wanted to do it on a certain level. We discovered later, <laughs> but we both were being um, very um, supported by our friends to do it. They're Persistently like, supported. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I just, I personally followed my gut and thought, okay, I'm resistant to this, but I'm going to do it. And Chris was at the workshop. And um, the, the workshop, by the way, is called Why Have You Come to Earth? And it, it's a very powerful, very profound week. I'm so glad that I did it. Um, and one of the greatest gifts was meeting Chris. And by the, well, I have a funny little story because um, I, I knew that Chris was somebody that everyone in that community talked about and had great admiration for, but I never had heard her last name. And, 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 and she was talking at one point to our whole group during midway through the workshop about the book that she was writing. And, and she was taking some questions from her audience, which is us, the 40 people in the workshop. And I happened for some reason, I forgot why, but I asked her if she was planning to go this traditional route or self-publishing. <laughs> And I didn't know this was Christine Carlson, you know? And so it was a really funny moment because the, the look she gave me and the, and the answer she gave me, I, I wish I could remember, but it's the, the, the tone of it, this incredulity and humor and everything all rolled into one. Um, that here I am asking a New York Times bestselling author uh, no, I think I, I remember exactly what I said, because, of course, I didn't know that you were an editor, a developmental editor either. I thought you were just a person that was asking, you know, and I, I, I mean, I, I did kind of assume maybe you did know who I was. And so I was just like, I said, oh, geez, I sure hope not. But I mean, I'm open to that possibility. <laughs> I'm like, oh, geez, I sure hope not. But I'm open. I'm open to that possibility. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that was it. I remember now. And so by the end of, long story short there, by the end of that week, we had gotten to know each other a little bit and we talked about her book, which she um, had, I think you had just, no, you hadn't yet sold it to the publishing company yet, but. Yeah, I had my proposal nearly done, but I hadn't yeah. sold it, yeah. So we, long story short, she ended up inviting me to be her editor uh, with, you know, working in tandem with her as she was writing From Heartbreak to Wholeness, which is actually a self-help book. It's, it's guiding readers through the journey of returning from grief to wholeness and to joy. And uh, it was such a profound and delightful experience to work with Chris. And because we live close together or close by, we got together in person a number of times to work on it together. And, you know, the hours spent listening to Chris's stories and getting to know about her relationship with Richard and getting to know the soul of this person, Chris Carlson, it was such an extraordinary experience and joyful and, and really productive. And we got the book done in time and into the hands of her publishing company on time. And, um, and it was a revelatory thing. We thought, okay, this was so good. Um, we both had talked about, or you know, expressed a desire to work with authors to help them through the process, knowing that it can be as, as hard as it is, it can also be so um, illuminating and transformative, I'm sure as you know, Josh, and you learn so much about yourself in the process of writing a book. And also there's a desire to actually help people to get it done, to take that dream and make it real and tangible. And so we joined forces to create book doulas. Um, so that was how we met. And I'm so grateful because she is a constant source of inspiration to me as a business partner and as a friend. And so. And I think one of the cool things we found out is Deborah and I are born on the same year, just about what, two days apart. You're the third, I'm the fifth. Yep, of July. of July. So we have our, our stars are very aligned. I mean, we're very, very have a lot of the same kinds of qualities. And um, we just do really, really well together as friends and business partners. And, you know, and I, I think when I found out, like, Deborah Evans really worked with Debbie Ford, I was a huge Debbie Ford fan and had done the shadow process with Debbie. And I just am really surprised I never ran like Deb, Deborah and I had never met, you know, and when I found that out, I was like, oh my God, she'd be great to work with, you know, because she's got, you want to work with somebody, of course, that sort of understands your genre of, of speak and, and everything that, that really can dig in and, and um, create all those weavings that, you know, really help you. I knew I had a limited amount of time. So I was really looking for, you know, higher level of developmental editing to just help me in the whole process with that book. So with book doulas, who do you focus on? Who's the ideal audience or customer student mm. who would participate in this program? Go ahead, Deb. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, well, I think there are various answers to that, Josh. I think that um, somebody who has a burning desire in their heart and soul, they, there's something that they just they, that, that won't let them forget about it. And sometimes it wakes them up in the wee hours of the morning, you know, and whether that's um, a book that has to do with parenting or relationships or health and wellness or uh, entrepreneurship or whatever the book is, it, Chris and I definitely tend to work with people who are writing nonfiction, transformational or self-help books and somehow two books. Um, we have worked with some people who write, who are writing memoirs as well, um, especially given that Chris has written her own memoir, but we tend to think of those as our ideal participants are writing more of a teaching memoir, a, a memoir that they're also using to turn toward the reader to at various points along the way in the book to um, inspire the reader in a very kind of direct way. And so that's the first thing I would say, that burning desire that, that won't let you forget that it's there. Chris, is there something you want to say about that? Yeah, I think, um, I think our ideal client is somebody who's also still in the investigation stages of their book and who may know they have a book in them, but doesn't really know what that book looks like yet, what that, how it's going to come out, how they're going to dive into the creative process. That's why we came up with a program called the Book Incubator. 
I mean, almost all of our terms, Josh, are like birthing terms. And we do have men in our course too. <laughs> but we, you know, we we really have made that association with the idea that, you know, you really birthing a book is really is that. It's it's creating it from the inside. It's cultivating it, it's growing it, it's giving it nourishment and everything it needs in order to become that, you know, kind of a lot easier to raise child than mine ever were. But, (laughs) you know, pushing it out is very, it's very similar. It's a big process. And we find that most people that come to us, even in our incubator program, go through quite a transformation um, just at the whole thought of the, of writing a book. So our incubator is really designed to help cultivate the author as much as um, the book itself. So we really teach people how to build their platform, how to brand themselves, how to how, uh, the important aspects of what this journey of being an author really is. And, you know, and I think what's great is that a lot of people might have the burning desire to write a book and they might go out and, you know, pay a lot of money to do that. And then they don't have a platform and then their book doesn't do anything. So we kind of created this program to assist people so that sometimes we've had people even do the program say, I love the program. I learned so much. I'll be able to use what I learned elsewhere, but I don't think I want to be an author you know, and and we've had that too. (laughs) Not as often, but most people come and they, everything that they learn from us, you know, whether it's SEO and branding um, or actually how to structure their book is able to help them in all areas of what it means to be an entrepreneur these days. What does the program look like in terms of timeline? Is it structured? It goes a certain amount of time or is it join whenever you want or... Well, the incubator that Chris is mentioning, um, it is 10 weeks um, and it's very live interactive with the two of us for the 10 weeks. Um, And our next incubator is starting on February 17th of 2022, which takes it to April 21st. Um, And so we meet with everybody as a group every week um, via Zoom like this. And we have an hour and a half call together a lot of teaching, a lot of content um, delivery with them. And also we we have a half an hour of time where we can do laser coaching with people and a lot of Q and A time. So it's, it's, it tends to be a very personal experience because there's a lot of dialogue back and forth. So we deliver a lot of information like that's very usable right away. Um, We also have guest uh, teachers that come on to speak about specific topics. Um, So, so that's the heart and soul of it is our weekly calls. And then we also have five Saturday boot camps during that 10 weeks. Um, And as the name implies, it's sort of a roll up your sleeves together day where we meet on zoom in the morning and then everybody structures their day, however, they want to really get to work. And then we come back together in the afternoon for another zoom session together and people read their work. uh, If they want to, they get feedback if they want that. And it's just a great way to keep that train moving down the tracks for them. Um, so that's like the, the, the bulk of it. And of course we have the Facebook, um, private Facebook page that goes with that so that the people can be working or inspiring each other along the way. Yeah, our groups tend to get really tight knit. It's really interesting. Like our last few groups, the chat has been really wild. (laughs) People are like on the chat right away and, you know, very interactive with each other. Um, So that's been really cool to see these relationships build over Zoom as well. That's great. Can you share some success stories with us? What uh, published books have come out of this? Well, we just started in uh, the fall of 2019. And so it's a, you know, book doulas and our incubator is relatively new. Um, We have a couple of books coming out this spring from a couple of our authors. Um, Do you think it's okay if I name names, Chris? Yeah, Michelle Neff Hernandez. um, Actually, we're super proud of her. She's one of the top 10 chosen CNN heroes. Um, So if if this comes out, please vote for her. Please vote for her. She's, um, she's, she has a um, foundation called Soaring Spirits, and she's written a book um, about her uh, time through loss called Different After You, and we're super excited. That's published by New World Library, um, and we're super excited that that's coming out in just a couple months now. Yeah, that's coming out uh, in 
April, I think, or March. And then another woman that we have worked with who's publishing her book, or it's coming out um, with Greenleaf Publishing, which is a hybrid publishing company. Um, Amy Wong is her name. And uh, she, her website is um, livingonpurpose.com. And- Is it alwaysonpurpose.com? Thank you. Always alwaysonpurpose.com. Thank you. Thank you. The reason living on purpose is on my mind is because it's, that's the title of the book. Um, exactly. But alwaysonpurpose.com. And Amy's book is, um, oh, the subtitle is Five Deliberate Choices to Create the Life of Your Dreams. And she is just a dynamo communication expert and, you know, wise woman um, and leadership coach working with a lot of, uh, of the like executives in Silicon Valley and that type of thing. Um, so those are two of our most recent successes. And then we've got a few books kind of in the cooker, as they say, um, with a few more authors where we have high hopes for them. And it's a little soon to talk about their, their books, but one of them has to do with, with becoming a six figure entrepreneur. It's, it's a book written for, my, uh, for women. And I think it's seven figures actually. <laughs> Right. Seven figures is the new six figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven figures. It's a seven figure entrepreneur. <laughs> That's absolutely right, Chris. Yeah, Leslie would be horrified if I didn't if we didn't correct that. Um, yeah, and and we've just signed on another person uh, who's going to be working with us, who did the incubator with us, and she's going to be going all the way through the birthing your book process, um, and who has a company uh, of her own and with her husband, and she's. You know, the books that we're working on are very rich, very beautifully written, and um, and it's it's uh, we're at a really interesting point, Josh, because we've been doing this now for not quite two years, and so we're at that point where we are starting to see, you know, these these books that have been gestating starting to take shape, and even some of the people that um, got to start early on with us and let their project kind of incubate and percolate inside of them for a while and are now coming back to like roll up their sleeves further and take it all the way. Um, so it's, it's a great process. I think probably by this time next year, we're gonna have probably another three books public coming out. Um, I was gonna say published by us, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah, we are going into book publishing too, book doulas publishing. We published, um, my heartbroken open book, the paperback version, that was our first experience. So that's something that we're looking toward um, for our near future is to, is to start our own publishing company from this venture. So with the people that you're working with, what are some of the common challenges that come up that they face in starting their book, working on their book, finishing their book? What are some of the trends or commonalities you've seen? Well, I'll start with that one. And I know Chris has a lot to say about this too, but I love this question, Josh, because, um, because one of, and this is really one of the core reasons that I wanted to get into this with Chris anyway, is because that I know from experience that so many of the hurdles that people face are hurdles that can be jumped over and, and moved beyond. And, and then I, I know that that feeling of despair of, oh, I'm never going to get this book written actually can be moved through and you know having had the privilege of sitting next to so many people to get their books done um, I know it's not easy but I know it's totally doable so and I would say that one of the number one obstacles of people that we see people facing is and it's something Chris alluded to before it's it's not having a clear structure for the book what we call the architecture of their book and you know, they may have a clear concept. They might have a core idea of, you know, I want to write about X, Y, and Z, but they don't necessarily know what type of book it is yet. They don't know if it's self-help or if it's a memoir. Um, if it is self-help, they may not know how they want it to flow. They don't know what, if they sit, sit down to write a chapter outline, they get stuck. Like, I don't know how I want this to roll out. They don't know how it's gonna get fleshed out. Like what, what stories will I bring to it to bring it to life? And who wants to hear my story anyway? Kind of that, that question comes up a lot. Um, and so I would say that the structure piece, not having it 
is it really gets in the way. And one thing I want to add to that, and I know you've probably heard this, Josh, just like Chris and I have, there are so many people that we meet who get a lot of information coming to them and through them. And they'll talk about like getting downloads, like I'm getting lots of downloads about my book. And they're writing these things down and then they're sitting in documents in their computer or, or in their notebook. And, and then they're stuck again. Like I have these downloads, but I don't know what to do with them. And so helping people to get to find and shape their architecture is such a thrill. And it's something that's a part of our book incubator. And it's also a workshop. We decided to create a workshop that only focuses on that, which we can tell you about when, you know, when the time is right. But um, so that's the first thing I would say is, is people wanting to write a book, having some real clear ideas about what they want to write about, but not knowing how to go about actually implementing those ideas. I, I also will just add that I think when you don't have any kind of structure, you don't know, you know, what the format of your book is, or even what kind of book you're writing, um, that that's a real problem because structure in this case actually creates a lot of freedom. Quick break here. Are you an entrepreneur? Do you want to write a book that will help you grow your business? Visit PublishedAuthor.com, where we have programs to fit every budget, programs that will help you write and publish your book in as little as 90 days, starting at just $39 per month. Or if you're too busy to write your book, we'll interview you and then write and publish your book for you. Don't let the valuable knowledge and experience you have go to waste. Head on over to PublishedAuthor.com to get the help you need to become a published author. You've already waited long enough. Do it today. Now, back to the show and structure will actually open up the highway to inspiration, you know, because you then have, it's like, I don't know, you probably had that ex experience speaking on the platform. Um, I've had that experience when I, when I'm go speak where some like there early on in my speaking career, I was just like, I don't want to prepare. I'm just going to go wing it. And so I would get up there in front of like, you know, a whole audience of people and I, I did okay. But once I started learning that, well, if I just prepare a little bit, I'm actually going to deliver a much more meaningful speech. And so I started to learn the value of just creating enough parameters for myself so that I could have the freedom of flow. It's like having a container for your own wisdom and your flow. And the same thing is true as a writer. Um, when I sit down to write a blog or anything, a lot of times I let my inspiration come, but then I ask myself the poignant question, what is the point of this blog? Like, what do I want to point to? Because I don't want to point to everything. Then nobody gets anything. And so we also find like with new authors and first time writers, a lot of times they think, and they may have a body of work that they've been working on for many, many years. So they're very knowledgeable. They're experts in their field but they have no focus. And so they, they bring this book idea and it's literally the whole kitchen sink. It's like everything in the kitchen is in this book. And so we really teach them how to deliver on one promise of their book, you know, like really focus in what is the promise of this book? What do you want your reader to know at the end of this book? How do you want them to feel? And what do you want them to walk away really understanding from this book? And even those simple questions are such directive questions for somebody to ask themselves. And even those questions, answering those questions for yourself right now will help you in discovering what your book is and what, how it's valuable to your reader. Because at the end of the day, you want to write a book that's valuable to the person who's reading it. I'd love to add a, another piece to that, Josh. And that's, you know, I think one of the things that is just so integrated into how Chris and I coach and teach people that it it's it's so seamless for us but um, I'd like to just differentiate that we are both very practically minded um, and also very um, soulfully directed so you know when it comes to writing a book and I know you know it with I'm just getting to know you now but I, I can tell that you already know this like it's it, there's like the very kind of left brain right brain aspects to writing a book and like Chris is saying we really love helping people to get the structure down that actually allows them to to write with greater freedom than they thought it would ever give them and the piece I wanted to add is that um with that whole kind of 
you know, teaching piece of how do you actually get your book written? I know that we're always really supporting writers on one level or another to, to really connect with their reader, you know, with that one reader on the other side of the page of that book that's not even written yet, but it's in the process of getting written. Like we really encourage them in a lot of direct ways and a lot of indirect ways to really be feeling into and thinking into that person and creating an intimate connection with your reader. And so it, it's, a, it's such an interesting thing because Chris is great about really writing for herself. Like I know having worked on From Heartbreak to Wholeness with her, like she, it, it's so natural for her to, to write from her own heart and soul for herself and at the same time to be writing for other people. And that comes through in her writing, whether it's in her books or in a blog, like you can feel it with her. And, and that's really what I love to encourage and, and we both love to encourage in new writers too, is how to do that. Like, how do you, how do you write for yourself? How to you give yourself freedom to express what you want to express without censoring yourself and also cultivate a connection with your reader so that they can feel when they're reading your book that you have them in mind. And, and that makes all, as you know, that makes all the difference. A lot of times when I write like that, I'll have to write as if I'm writing in my diary, like that I'm only writing for myself because I get to the rawness of, well, if nobody's going to read this, then what would I say? You know, if nobody's ever going to see this, but me, what would I say to myself right now? And how real can I be? And so I, I do my best to go to that place. And then later I'll go back and I'll, I'll ask myself to edit it so that I've included my reader in this conversation. And that's a really big piece of, of one of the things we teach in our courses is the artful way to do that when it's so subtle. It's, it's just so, so subtle that the reader suddenly feels like you're with them and they're with you. And I think if you can let a reader into your mind and into your heart, that's when you really impact them. You know, that's when they feel this sense of, I know this woman I feel her. I feel she understands me. Um, you know, and, and they, they really appreciate that. That's what I have found anyways, is, is that your reader really appreciates you doing that when you're able to. You said some magic words there that feeling like, you know, somebody, I noticed that when I was writing articles for business magazines or on LinkedIn or whatever, and then I would meet somebody in person who had read what I wrote, but it was the first time we were meeting and when they came up and said, I feel like I know you, I felt like I had succeeded on some level because I felt like, well, that's great. If they feel like they know me, I must be doing something right in my writing to make that connection or make them feel like there's that connection there. Absolutely. You're doing something very, very right. Well, so you have the incubator program. So that goes for 10 weeks. They go through the incubator. And then after that, it, do do they have the option then to become a client of book doulas and you help them through that on a more customized basis or how does that work? Yeah. So after the incubator, we um, have a program for a much smaller group of people called the momentum program. And we, um, we open that up um, and, and see who from our group at that particular time wants to come. And so far we've always filled it. It's usually about a, a five or six person group. And from there, they get individual time with us. So they get a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one coaching with us. And they're still in a group because what we found is that people want to continue on. They get so much out of the group experience and it's so productive for them that they really want to continue that part of it on. So we, we have um, designed the momentum program. And then Deb, you want to talk about um, how somebody might work from with us after that? Yeah, well, in, with that momentum program that Chris is talking about, um, we do actually get our hands into their writing. So we, they, they get our eyes, they get our developmental editing um, perspective on their writing. And we always get at least one chapter fully edited with them. So we and they know the structure fully, like they are, we have really worked with them on the structure of their book, like, like gone in there and with a tool set and, and really examined it and pulled it apart sometimes in a good way and worked with them on that. Yeah. And one of the aims in that is that they have a, a chapter um, 
that can be their guiding light, their kind of their blueprint and their way shower forward. So whether they work with us or they go on to work with another editor or, or just continue on their own for some period of time that we want them to have a, a beautiful chapter where they go, this is how you do it. This is how I do it. And um, so that's momentum. And then the birthing your book process, um, you know, because there's just so many hours in a day and in a week, uh, in a month and a year, um, we can only take on so many clients. So right now that's looking like somewhere in the range of three to four clients a year. Um, and that's typically, we're working with people for about a six month period where we're helping them to get that book written all the way through and edited, completed, completely edited. And we have basically a very intricate kind of multi-layered editing process because they're getting the developmental editing with us. They're getting the substantive editing or what sometimes is called content editing. They're getting the line editing. Um, and at the end, a good full copy editing of the book. And then, um, and they're getting Chris as well to work with them on, you know, if they want to discuss things around branding and author platform building along the way during that process, they're also getting her eyes on that. And a lot of emotional, psycho spiritual support along the way from Chris and from me. And so, um, and we're just, I mentioned earlier that we're, we're starting to work with a woman in January. She's done the incubator with us. She did momentum with us. We just finished that up. And mid January, we're gonna go full steam ahead on her book um, and, and have that completed by July of this coming year. So um, that's, yeah, that's, some, that's one of the greatest joys is to, I wish that we could work with more than we can, but since there are two of us, <laughs> but we also have a growing kind of pool of wonderful editors that we feel great about who we're recommending. Um, and like you, uh, we know from the spirit of the way you work that there, there are so many wonderful professionals out there. And so we want all of the people who work with us to win, to get their books written, no matter who they go to. And so that's a key thing is that we'll recommend editors to those who wanna keep going if they're not working with us. And again, our main goal is that if we never get to see them again, we want them to be off on their way with all the tools and support that they need. And so you now are one of our, <laughs> one of our supports we can send people to as well. Thank you. So now you have something coming up on December 1st, right? And we're recording this as of November 9th, but you have something releasing on December 1st, right? Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, go ahead, Deb. Yeah, so it, it's a brand new workshop. It came out of the incubator. It was born out of the incubator program because it's a part of the incubator. Um, and it's, it's an important part. It's such an important part. And it's exactly what we were talking about. It's, it's a four week workshop starting December 1st um, and ending on December 22nd. So it's four consecutive weeks a live interactive with Chris and me, similar to the incubator. And it's all about architecture. It's called the architecture of your book. And it has to do with learning that framework that will allow you to have the freedom to get your book written. So um, our, our decision to do this in December is so that people can start the new year with a really clear um, action plan and have that the joy and the, and the empowerment of knowing the architecture of the book, having a chapter outlined down, having that flow very clear, knowing exactly what their book is about. Um, Chris, do you want to say anything more about it? Yeah, no, there's just be a lot of, you know, a lot of work with us and, and downloadable um, worksheets. And, you know, there's, there's quite a few um, materials that they're going to receive too. So it's not just us talking, they're going to have um, things that they take away with them that are really going to help be those guiding, um, those guideposts to getting that book structured and and it's like, it's almost a real readiness, um, book readiness course, uh, just to get really like ready to go um, in January, you know, and we think December is like a perfect time because it's such a reflective time. And people are, of course, busy during the holidays, but maybe a little less busy since still COVID's out there. I don't know. Everybody's kind of going, forgetting COVID, which is fine with me, but <laughs> there's still, you know, there's still a lot of time to reflect in December too. And where do people go to sign up for the course? Where can they go to learn more about book doulas and everything that you're doing? 
Yeah, just go visit us at bookdoulas.com, B-O-O-K-D-O-U-L-A-S.com. And if you don't know what a doula is, it's a birthing person usually. Like they, doulas help birthing babies. And so we're book doulas because we're going to help you birth your baby book. (laughs) Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Christine, for sharing your story, talking about your story and your husband. And Deborah, thank you so much for being here today on the Published Author Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to spread the word, please give us a five-star rating review and tell your friends to subscribe too. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. And if you're an entrepreneur interested in writing and publishing a nonfiction book to grow your business and make an impact, visit PublishedAuthor.com for show notes for this podcast and other free resources.